Hey guys, I'm here to talk to you about battery builds and why they're awesome and why you should be introducing them into your companies. So, I think the static analysis is pretty criminally underused by us as an industry. Um, we, as JavaScript developers, have some pretty fantastic tools available to us that make our code better and more likely to be correct and catches all the stupid mistakes we make where we write position instead of pause or something like that, right? But we don't tend to use these in a lot of our projects. Who's using a static analysis tool as part of their build today? Okay, so that's about half the room. Yeah, but the other half saw General Assembly. <laughs> uh, the General Assembly guys are there, and I saw some people over here. No, it's not General Assembly, okay? It's because introducing static analysis to an existing project is hard. You have all this code that's there, and it's bad. And the tool will say, it's bad, and you should feel bad. But So what normally happens is you try and get a build going, and you have a build that looks like this. It's like, I've got some JavaScript JSON warnings or ESLint warnings, whatever it is. I put it in and say, are there any warnings? And if there are, I fail the build, which is great until you have an existing project. <laughs> Confluence has heaps of warnings. I was going to look up an a up-to-date number for this, but I ran out of time. <laughs> um, but the, this, this model just doesn't work when you have a heap of warnings because you just can't fix them all to be able to make the build go green so you know when the build goes red that you need to go and fix something. So you end up with this red build that nobody looks at and there's just more warnings piling up and you go on holiday and come back and realize that everything's worse than before. And that's not what you want. So on another front, um, we have a bit of an obesity crisis. Now I'm not talking about the ice cream fridges. Uh, I'm talking about this talk. Uh, who saw this talk? Last, late last year. If you haven't, go and look it up. It's hilarious. It's really good. Um, it's talking about how page weight is a really big problem for us as an industry, as web developers. Um, so Confluence, when I started on the team uh, in January 2015, a regular Confluence page had about three and a half meg worth of JavaScript and CSS. And that's a lot for you to shove down a shitty pipes in Australia and then get them into the browser and for the browser to chug along and work out how to make all that Flexbox shit work. Um, <laughs> so this is a really, this is a big performance problem which is a user experience problem. People don't like to wait because we're impatient. Um, but the issue is that I can't just look at that three and a half meg and go, oh look there's two meg in this thing and I'll just delete that and problem solved. Um, it's a death by a thousand cuts problem. We, would have, we have a lot of different features that are broken up into plugins inside Confluence. And the, when you broke down the, where all the JavaScript and CSS was coming from, it, the graph looks something like this. There was one thing that took about 22%, which was the shared UI thing for, for Atlassian. Then you had a, like a 9% and a 7%. And then it's just hell. You're just like, ah, oh, shit. There's just too many things to fix. Um, you, the problem with, with this and with static analysis is the problem is too large to solve in one sitting. If we had problems like this that we could solve in one sitting, we'd just go away and fix the, all the things, do one pull request, and then uh, job is done and we'll go get some beer. Um, but the problem is too big. So what your traditional approach would be to just kind of chip away at it. And you would set aside like a day a week where on that day you would go and fix up, up some warnings. But the problem was that the other four days of the week, the rest of your team is working against you. They don't know it. They're not actively malicious. They're just, there's no feedback to them that the things that they're doing are anti-patterns or that they're contributing to this problem which you're trying to fix. Um, and I can't just watch everyone over their shoulder. <laughs> like, this, I just can't. The, the scale of the team, there's just too much change coming in. I can't be on every pull request. Um, so it feels a little bit like this. It's a bit of a Sisyphean task. I'm like pushing on this boulder to try and fix the page weight or the static analysis problems or whatever, and the rest of the team is just kind of like slowing me down. Um, and that's not what you want. You want the team to 
to help you, not work against you. So to help solve this problem, I wrote a tool called Git Ratchet, which helps, allows you to build ratcheted builds. So what is a ratcheted build? Um, a ratcheted build looks something like this. You have your measures coming in, you feed it into this black magic tool, Git Ratchet, this lovely box, and then from that box, it talks you to Git repository to work out what the current baselines are. And if the, uh, if the baseline has gone lower or stayed the same, that's fine, you get a green build, and you know that things are not getting worse. But if it gets worse, the build fails, and then someone has to go and look at the failing build and make sure that they fix up the new JS hint warnings that they put in, or fix up the fact that they added a bunch of extra page weight. There's no need for a storage server. All the data is stored in the Git repository inside Git notes. So it, there's also no uh, mess created over your commit history. It's all kind of hidden away in Git notes. I would get into that, but that's a whole other lightning talk. Um, you have the full history of your data over time going back through your commit graph, which is really great when you want to look back and see how far you've come. So just some examples going back to the, the start of the presentation. You have your ES link warnings coming in to a Git Ratchet build. You can check whether or not they've uh, introduced new warnings and fail the build if they have. Or for page weight, we do a little bit of data transformation and we introduce this concept of Slack where um, we give people about a 10K window where they can add up to 10 kilobytes of extra JavaScript and CSS over the previous baseline. But if they try and go beyond that, it fails. Which means that if you do a small bug fix and change a couple of lines, like it's not going to materially change the problem. But if they decide to add D3 onto the page, then the view is going to go red, and I'm going to hunt them down and say, what are you doing? Um, so that's Git Ratchet. Uh, we had a lot of success with this. Um, we used it for page weight on Confluence, and between January and December, we managed to get the page weight down to 1.8 meg, which is still a lot, but it's like, it's a pretty good result, right? You, if you saw this on like a fitness blog and you saw the, the before and after, you'd be like, yeah, go you. You did, you did good. Um, and this, this was done by a pretty small team. And we wouldn't have been able to do this had the page weight build not been catching the additional JavaScript that was getting added by other teams, and the, which gave us a feedback loop which allowed us to tell them to go and do things better. So that's it. If you want to play around with Git Ratchet, uh, it's gitratchet.org. Um, you can go and download it and use it in your own builds. If you're interested in finding out more about Git Ratchet, if you have any questions, just raise an issue on the on the repository and I'll respond to that or you can tweet at me, I'm at Ian Grummet. Thank you.